tribes. This morning we follow the order of service of the word as it begins on page 38 in the front of the red hymn. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. We have come to the presence of God who created us to love and serve him as his dear children. But we have disobeyed him and deserve only his wrath and punishment. Therefore, let us confess our sins to him and plead for his mercy. Merciful Father in heaven, I am altogether sinful from birth. In countless ways I have sinned against you and do not deserve to be called your child. But trusting in Jesus, my Savior, I pray, have mercy on me according to your unfailing love. Cleanse me from my sin and take away my guilt. God, our Heavenly Father, has forgiven all your sins. By the perfect life and innocent death of our Lord Jesus Christ, he has removed your guilt forever. You are his own dear child. May God give you strength to live according to his will. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may always look forward to the end of this present evil age and to the day of your righteous judgment. Keep us steadfast in true and living faith, and present us at last holy and blameless before you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Sunday of End Times, also known as Last Judgment. Our first lesson taken from the Old Testament book of Daniel, reading from the seventh chapter. As I looked, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow. The hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated, and the books were opened. The word of the Lord. I invite you now to chant with me Psalm 90, found on page 99.
James chapter 5, reading the first 11 verses. Now, brothers, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you. For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying, peace and safety, destruction will come upon them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape but you, brothers, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all sons of the light and sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be alert and self-controlled. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be self-controlled, putting on faith and love as a breastplate, and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us, so that, whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another, and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Watch, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. Hallelujah. <laughs> serving as the basis for our sermon meditations. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right, and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothing and clothe you? When did, you, when did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, in the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or estranged or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, I tell you the truth. Whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of our Lord. 
Jesus Christ. As was mentioned, the Word of God, for our exciting comfort this morning, the words from St. Matthew, the 25th chapter. Dear people of God, when many, dare I say most, think of Judgment Day, they view it probably more so with a negative feeling. The whole idea of judgment, for many, carries with them this negative connotation. How about you? How do you view judgment day? Positively or negatively? We talk about it a lot. We just sang about it. Every Sunday in the creed, we say words like, He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. The next time the people on this planet meet their maker, there will be no question as to who he is. The one who came lowly, born of the Virgin Mary, laid in a manger. The one who was from that no-name area, Nazareth. The one they called the carpenter's son. Will not be mistaken. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory, shining more brightly than the noonday sun. Jesus will be seen simultaneously, and he'll be recognized instantaneously by every person, by every person alive or dead in heaven or hell, they will know who he is. And we're told that all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people, one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. So when you hear these words, it'll be natural that we ask that $64,000 question, right? Which am I? A sheep or a goat? Well, let's use the words that Jesus gave to us in our text for today. What about uh, feeding the hungry? Well, I can't say that I've ever served in a soup kitchen, I guess, but I have given non-perishable food items to a food bank before. Does that count? What's the next one? Drinks, drinks for the thirsty. Again, I have never gone to a marathon and handed out a little Gatorade cup to somebody running by. But I've been to an awful lot of church potlucks. And, and I've served coffee and water, some of those. Invited a stranger in. Well, that can be a little dangerous in our day and age, right? It was just as dangerous in Jesus' day and age. I have in my vocation driven people that needed some help to either a hotel or the bus station or whatever it might have been. Clothes for the needy. Well, after that garage sale, you got to get rid of it somehow, right? So you take it to Wise Penny or Goodwill or whatever. Looking after the sick. Anybody have children? Had children? Got that one covered, I think, right? They're always getting sick, and you always have to take care of them one way or another. Prison. I will say my vocation, I have visited people in jail before, but many of us will think, you know, I just, I, that's not really one that I've got. I, I, most of my friends don't end up in prison, so I can't say that. But five out of six ain't bad, right? You know what? If this is the checklist for getting into heaven, going through this list is going to damn us every time. Because at some point, in some way, shape, or form, we haven't really lived up to the things that God has told us we should do. And we recognize that looking at everybody in the world, there's only one person who has ever fully kept these things the way that the Father has required us to, 
And that, of course, is none other than Jesus himself. So what we really need to do is listen. Listen closely to what the king said to those on his right. Jesus refers to them as those blessed by his father. It wasn't superior behavior that landed them on the right side of Jesus. They were showing favor. There at Jesus' right hand, they were collecting their inheritance. And inheritance is not something that you've worked or earned for. It is something that is given to you. So what's the difference? So what's the difference between a sheep and a goat? One thing, faith. Did a person understand themselves to be 100% corrupt, 100% unable to gain the favor of their God by the way that they live, the things that they say, the people that they associate with, or whatever. Did the person cling 100% Jesus and what he did for them? Not arrogantly thinking that somehow they're better than other people. Did a person trust that God had granted them pardon because of that life of Christ, that death on that cross, that glorious resurrection, that judgment that he will pronounce? On the day of his glorious return, Jesus' all-seeing eyes will be able to pick out those who had faith, just as a Palestinian shepherd could easily separate the sheep from the goats. And when Jesus returns, a separation will take place. And it'll be carried out by the perfect, all-seeing eye, all-knowing Lord as he looks into our hearts. So what are we talking about here? What's all this talk about feeding the hungry, visiting the sick, and those in prison? It's evidence, my friend. It is evidence that a person either did or did not have faith. Trusting in Jesus means that when you stand before God, you can humbly say, I've kept all those commandments. I've done it all. I've suffered hell. I get heaven. Because Jesus did. And he credits all of those glorious things to our account. No evidence in faith in Jesus shows no faith in Jesus. When Jesus returns, a separation is going to take place. And yes, it's going to be carried out publicly, as God says. And I don't know about you, but I know as a kid, I was always kind of worried about that whole, that whole opening up of the book thing. And the things I thought I got away with, revealed to my parents and others, my parishioners. But you know what? Your page and my page are going to look the same. They're going to be blank, covered in the blood of Jesus because of that faith that we have in him, that clings to him. It's clearly going to show we've done everything he asked us to do, which is so simple. Believe, and life is yours. Jesus, it's going to be obvious on the last day who trusted in you and who did not. And even those that thought somehow they were going to get away with it, that either God is love and everything's going to go just fine on the end, or I've done enough, I'm better than a lot of other people, they're going to find out 100% faith in Jesus. So now I ask you, Again, let's, let's cement this, let's nail it. With all the honest introspection that you can possibly produce, without making any excuses or blaming someone else for
for everything you've done, taking into consideration all of God's commandments, all of the things written in the book of the law, remembering every time that you have fallen headlong into sin, looking as deeply inside your soul as you possibly can, are you going to be a sheep or a goat? If, you're, if you search your soul and don't lower your standards or lower God's standards, for what he requires of you, you're going to have to conclude that you're a goat. And that Jesus is going to say to you, depart from me. You are cursed by my Father. But please listen. And listen like you have never listened before. Jesus didn't share this information with you to make you wonder whether you're going to end up on his right or his left, whether you're going to be a sheep or a goat. The purpose of this lesson and this sermon is not to get you to look deeply inside your own soul and wonder, hmm, am I going to make it? God's will for you is that you get your eyes off your sorry self and stare at Jesus and look to him for that eternal life. While he was hanging on that cross, he did hear from his Father, Depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire, prepared to the devil and his angels. Curse of hell already been suffered by Jesus. The commandments of God, all perfectly kept already by Jesus, kept for you and for me. So the strongest words you're going to hear from God is this, Christ is risen, you're forgiven. The greatest words you are going to hear from God are going to come through his Son, when with his own mouth, you hear with your own ears, come, come, you who are blessed by my Father. Receive your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. You'll be among the blessed on Jesus' right side. And you will hear those words from Jesus because he has set you free. You know it now, and you will know it and experience it on that day. Through faith in Jesus, you are God's holy, forgiven child right now, and it's not going to change. On that day that Jesus returns in glory, you will be there, shining with the brightness of the radiance of Jesus himself. Believe. Believe that good news and share it with others. Amen. Let's rise. Now may the peace of God that transcends all understanding keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. For our confession of faith this morning, I invite you to turn to the Apostles' Creed on page 41. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting.
and Savior, give us grace to lovingly, unselfishly dedicate ourselves and our possessions for use in your kingdom. Michael, our shortcomings and sins, we bring this offering to your altar in a spirit of meekness and repentance. Forgive us for all the times that we've been uncharitable to others and to you. Hear us to the glory of your name. Amen. Please rise for prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, as we stand in this world doomed to destruction, comfort us with the knowledge that you have loved us with an everlasting love. Fill us with the peace that comes from knowing that we have God's full forgiveness because of the sacrifice that you made for our sins. Comfort our spirits with your promise of everlasting life. By the Spirit, strengthen our faith through word and sacrament. Make us watchful each day for your reappearing in glory to deliver us from this present evil world. Don't let the growing darkness of ungodliness put out the light of the knowledge that you have given us by faith. May we never grow weary of resisting sin or doing good, knowing that that is our reasonable service of love to you who first loved us. Preserve our faith that we may finally wear the crown of glory. Enable each of us to be a source of strength and comfort to each other. Draw our hearts to you, that we may remain in constant touch with you through prayer. And Heavenly Father, it's in prayer that we come to you now on behalf of Sharon Black, who is the mother of Tim Black, who is suffering from cancer. Lord God, giver and sustainer of life, we ask that you visit Sharon with your loving compassion, that if it's your will, you allow her body to experience healing and recovery. Give her the peace of mind that comes from knowing that her God and Savior is always near. You promise never to leave or forsake your children when they need you. We ask that you would make this clear to your servant so that she might rest more easily, assured of your love, and that all who are anxious about the care that she is going through will also have that calm assurance and also that knowledge, that firm conviction that whenever any of us falls asleep in your name, we arise to eternity because of what you have done for us. And as we all await your glorious return, we look forward to that day when we will all be joined with you before your throne in heavenly glory. We ask all this in your name. It's in that name that we pray the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
drives. Our service continues on page 43. O Lord God, our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptation. And bestow on us your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you is peace. All of you, especially guests that are with us this morning, we're happy to have you here as well. Uh, a couple of announcements, obviously things recorded in your bulletin, but uh, have been informed that St. John's in Mineola uh, has a mission display that goes from 12 to 4 o'clock today. Uh, if you are interested in that, you can also talk to uh, um, Judy Betcher about it. Uh, she was there. If it's something that interests you and you want more details about that, and possibly going there, you can speak to her about that after the service. Um, the gifts that we were going to do uh, for the adoptive family, uh, for the, um, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, used to be the Pregnancy Counseling Center, now it's uh, New, New, New Day. Day, New Day, uh, are available over there. Uh, if you are interested in that, you can take one. Uh, you may want to speak to Brenda Carpenter or Shar Flatterud about it. Uh, they're in groups of three, um, but uh, you certainly are welcome to take more. Uh, expense is a little bit more on some of them than others with the groupings and things like that. 
so if you want to help out in some way, uh, speak to them, and they'll be back there hopefully by that little display. On my right, the sheep side. On your left, the goat side. So just saying, it's my right. You're all sheep. And lastly, just what you're doing, some of you are doing right now, smiling. Okay, we're going to smile, and we're going to have our picture taken. Suck it up. Those of you that don't like it, let's do it, okay? Just do it. Um, we are gracious enough to have Corinne is here to take our pictures this morning, and next week as well. A number already had theirs done this morning. I know there are some of you that are like me. You don't want your picture taken. Do it anyways, okay? If you're not going to look at yours. Somebody else might want to, and know that some of the people, maybe they haven't seen it, you know, so just come, stick around, you can stay seated, you can come up here, it only takes about a minute for each one, she's really good, and smile, then you can go have coffee and a treat, all right, if you want coffee and a treat first, get your coffee and a treat, then come back in, thing is, come back in, and if the line is too long, you're going to be here next week, come next week, all right, but just, let's do it, all right. Have a wonderful week. Enjoy.